So what I love about your study and your work that you guys do together with Sentence Decision Science is that it's based up the subconscious mind. And you and I and neuroscientists around the world know that subconscious response proves a more accurate response than a conscious response when it comes to capturing the true perception and emotions of sound and music. So I want us to discuss the importance for brands to understand the value to start investing time and money in measuring consumer subconscious mind. Yeah, um, I, I think it's really critical. As I said, I don't trust any studies that say, what do you think of the sound? Like I just don't, and I have trouble telling clients to trust it. It's a nice response. You get the sort of like, this is highly offensive or I hate it and that's fine. But does it mean that you don't remember the spot? Does it remember, the, do you now remember the spot and you're like, I hated that sound, you know, but I'm gonna go and purchase that thing because now I have it in my mind. Um, so I think that it is, you know, especially as now brands come to us and brands want to be, you know, they don't want to be um, safe. They want to be disruptive. Hmm. So disruptive doesn't always test well consciously, you know, it's, it's just true. It, but does it test well subconsciously? Does it come through as unique? Is there, a, is there an authenticity there that you don't get to when you're asking somebody how they feel about it? Um, I think what's important to remember about sound, and I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again, this message, because I think you have to say things three times before people hear you. It is not about the sound, it's about the experience. So the only way that we understand the experience overall is to not ask about the sound, just change it, A, B, that from a methodology perspective, and my goal is not to make a nice sound, it's to move the entire experience forward to have there be added attribution, added recall in, in 18 to 24 months, to have it connect emotionally more, to have you be more likely to, um, to purchase or tell a friend about this um, product, material, digital app, whatever it may be. So the, the outcomes that I'm really looking for, I can only get to with subconscious response. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting because our in-store music research that we did uh, at a fast food restaurant, we, we, we did exactly the same. So we had people standing outside the restaurant after they had experience mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to ask them questions. And then, as you say, we, we ask about the overall restaurant yeah. experience where music was just one of the questions in the middle. Yeah. And by having them being outside the restaurant is that we didn't want them once we hit that question we didn't want them to be like oh wait let me think um and out of the results where well, we had two thousand uh customer responses that actually when it wasn't playing any music in the restaurant people were saying yes yeah right yeah yeah so mm -hmm. so it, yeah. it's, it's super important and also there, there are like neuroscience marketing like um, advertising uh films where they ask uh, the conscience questions right do, do you like it do you do not like it and i think it comes also with our culture like the language is also very restricted we don't know maybe what words to use to express feelings so it's not that we don't know or don't want to say the truth maybe we can't express us like that um and 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 therefore i i, I say like do both yeah but definitely mm -hmm. don't just do the, the the conscious one correct and that's always what we do there's a piece at the end that's always about the the conscious response but i think you make a great point it's never do you like it or do you not like it sometimes you need to say how does this make you feel how did yeah. this music, how does this music make you feel? And I think you're right that some people are like a little uncomfortable with that, but it is universal mm. that music gets to emotion and people, even the people who are most uncomfortable with their feelings can usually say it's upbeat. It, it makes me happy. Like I'm tapping my toes, those sort of things. Um, they may not delve too deeply into their emotional well. Um, but at the end of the day, you're looking for response, you know, mm -hmm. for, for a brand. Yeah, and there's always an example that I love, and I'm sure you probably have seen it, but it's the uh, 
it's the Cheetos com uh, commercial that they did neuroscience on. Have you have you heard mm -hmm. of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you want to explain it? Or should I explain? No, it? go ahead. Go ahead. You're you're. I think you're more familiar with than I am, but I have <laughs> um, heard of it um, through clients of ours. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's a commercial they want to test before they go out. And they do like a focus group. So in the commercial is a woman coming into like a laundry uh, room in the US probably. And then it's her time, but the, the lady uh, before her, she hasn't still finished. So she gets really upset. And then suddenly you see the Cheetos guy like pointing out the, the first lady's like uh, laundry that is white and he goes, that's hers. And then the commercial ends. And then when they do the... <laughs> The, the conscience focus group or, or questionnaires, then they get responsive like, yeah, but that's not nice to do. And, you know, like, would you would do that? No, of course not. You know, and, and it's not like they're lying. It's just our right. social behavior, what we will learn to say. But when they did the, the neuroscience on their brains, the area where you get excited or probably the feeling of that, yeah, I would have done the same. Well, that's so cool it lit up and mm -hmm. this is where I always say then that our brain you can't you can lie but your brain can't lie right <laughs> right? right when you right. get excited or something happens in your body you can hide it but if you yes. scan it <laughs> yeah yeah and I think it's you you know one of the things I'm so excited about like as I as I continue to work with sentient is the fact that they've made that ability of neuroscience insight available at a quantitative scale um, and through mobile and computer, which, you know, when I started in this business was not, it was all biometric and that you were only going to get to a certain number of people in that way, especially for music at the time, nobody was going to be spending that kind of money on a, on a study for music only. So um, it's, it is really interesting. And I think societal norms play a really important role in how we think about sound and music.